Uh, good morning, everyone. So um, I thought we would start by um, asking you, Peter, just to give us a little bit of background about the company and how you came to form it in the first place. Yeah, well, I mean, first of all, thanks for having me here today. Uh, I, uh, it was funny, like, I, we were just sitting outside, and uh, there was this van driving by, and it had trust pilot everywhere. And uh, I was just thinking about uh, coming here uh, five years ago. We had this little office in Hammersmith. Yeah. And um, it was pretty much like the beginning of the company, where, where my idea was that, so by the way, I'm Peter. Uh, I'm uh, the founder of Trustpilot, uh, and um, the idea with Trustpilot has been to help someone like my mom. If she wanted to buy online, uh, if she wants a new kitchen, if she wants a trip to France, yep. I want her to get a good trip. And it, the idea is also like help people who are starting businesses to compete with yep. bigger businesses. And, and, and when we started the business, I was trying to explain to companies that it, would, it matters what your customers are writing about you online. And most businesses thought that was the craziest thing ever. And, 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 and uh, they just said, like, no, it doesn't. And then living in today's world, uh, is really tr trust, I think, is just the essence of the, of the, the, the time we live in. Yeah. And it was just a, a symbolic for me to, to have like, been here, like living on a couch in London. Like in London, they have usually the apartments where they're built for two people and five or six people live in them. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and, and working hours in London tend to be very long. And like, so you're there in the tube, you're listening to conversations where people think like you're, you're crazy. And here, coming here today, uh, speaking to the audience, so, so it was a big day. Yeah. So, as you say, trust is such a big issue uh, in, in today's world. How, how do you talk to companies about engaging with their clients in a way that, um, you, you know, where they step in and engage versus kind of um, avoiding, you know, uh, things coming out about them online? Yeah, I think, so it's funny, like, people, when, 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 when they're just people, then they know what they want. Yeah. They, 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 uh, they're looking to buy from a company, and they want to get what you can say is the full picture. And, and, and so you want to know the good, and you want to know the bad, and you want to know how is the business reacting when they're making a mistake or when somebody gets upset. And so, so I think as a business owner, for anybody here like in, in, in the audience, I think just, just, just imagine you're a consumer and, 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 and then and give the information that the consumer wants. Yeah. So I think, I think a lot of business owners, they're, then, then the second you become a business owner, then you're like, oh, the full picture. <laughs> Yeah. So does that also mean we need to show them this? Yeah. And, and I think that my, my, my answer to them is that in today's world, uh, we, we have become really accustomed to Uber. We've become accustomed to eBay. We've been accustomed to Airbnb. We've been accustomed to Amazon. Like, like, so all these businesses, what they have in common is that there's a feedback loop. You share your opinion. Yep. And I think, I think going in, could you imagine, like, just, just imagine this, you go into a store and the, 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 the clerk after you bought what you want, they say, oh, by the way, Phil, we just want you to let you know we really don't care about what you think about buying here. <laughs> and this is unthinkable. Or can you imagine going to, to eBay and uh, there's this gentleman from Hong Kong and he wants to sell you an almost new iPhone. Uh, and he claims that it's, it's as good as new, and if you just send him some money, uh, he'll send it to you without knowing what other strangers think about this gentleman. Yeah. And, and, and so I think, I think my advice for business today is um, invite all your customers to be a part of that feedback loop and do it in a very transparent way. Yeah. And, 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 then, and then don't be afraid to show that you're human. Yeah. I think businesses today, they're, they're so, they want to be perfect, they want to be 
want to appear perfect. And perfection today is showing that you're human. So you see presumably companies that either don't engage or they engage to try to justify or they actually engage to listen and learn. Yeah, yeah, there, there, there are a couple of levels. Like the worst you can do is just not to do anything. Yeah. And then, then, then what happens then is that there, there's some, 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 some person at some forum like with a nickname like the mysterious Dr. Death or something yeah. will just write something about you and, 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 and people will think, like, why don't you engage? Why don't you respond? So, so, so not engaging, not responding is absolutely the worst. And yeah. then the second best is just to go in and respond and say that you care. Yeah. The, the, the level after that is just transparently invite everybody, every one of your customers, to tell them what they think about you. Yeah. Not just the happy ones, yeah. not just a, a handful, but, but, but really being open to feedback for everybody. And then I'd say the, the, what, what we really see the, the leaders doing in, in today's world is then, and I think, I think that's, that's a consequence of people being a part of that feedback loop, is that <coughs> we're seeing the leading companies start to collaborate with their customers mm -hmm. and, 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 and use the opinions of their customers to, um, to influence their businesses and let them know that they're influencing their business. And yeah. I think in particular as we're moving more towards every company today is trying to, to create some kind of longer tie with their customers, a subscription economy almost. Yeah. I think that creating that bridge between, or, or that, that bond between you and your customers is, uh, is, is one of the most powerful things you can do. Yeah. And so obviously you have trust in the name of the company, so it's important to you. How do you position your brand versus your competitors in that sense of, and verification and so on? Yeah, I think, I think that the first part is that we see ourselves as independent. And so that means that we must be for the consumer and for the business, but independent of both. Right. And, and, and so that means there are certain guidelines on Trustpilot, and it also means that we are, we're investing enormous amount of resource into ensuring that we have high quality content yeah. on our platform. I think, I think our, our biggest message to businesses is that we don't see Trustpilot as a way for you to look good. Yeah. We see Trustpilot as a way for you to look the way you are. And then we can help you become good in that process. And I think that, that, that that's the biggest key here because I think, I think that in, in, in today's world of, uh, of fake news and, and and I think everybody's a little less techno-optimistic. I, I, th I, think, I think people are very, very tired of being manipulated. They're tired of just being presented with the most positive future you can imagine. Uh, so, so I think that that was a thing that was popular five or ten years ago, but, but I don't think there's much future in it. Yeah. And you, you've just recently launched, um, literally in the last few days, a rebrand. Um, what, what was really the thinking behind that for you guys? Yeah, so, so we're, we're 10 years old, for those who don't know that. And, um, and I'm not a developer and I'm not a designer. Uh, I could just, I just had this idea and I gathered a, a, a group of people. Yep. And so, so the website pretty much looked like it was from 2008 because that's when we <laughs> right. came up with the design. And, and, and the way we talked about ourselves was also very 2008-ish. Um, and, 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 and it's funny, like, I, I'm, I'm, I'm turning, uh, I just turned 36. I look 18, I know. I'm using a very good moisturizer. <laughs> uh, and you're living in Copenhagen, which helps. And I live in Copenhagen, helps. very clean. I go to, like, I go to work every day with my bike. Yeah. Uh, but, but, but so I haven't yet realized that, 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 that I'm actually becoming a grown-up. And to some extent, I think the same was true for the business. Yeah. That we hadn't realized, hey, actually, we have, we have 10 years uh, on our back. And, and, and the world has actually changed. Like today, the big thing is everybody now knows what I said earlier, which is that it matters what customers are writing about you online. That, that was the first core realization. And then the, 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 the realization of today is that it matters more how you get your reviews and how you get your customer feedback than the quantity of that feedback or that it's only five stars. And so there were two things. We wanted to talk about ourselves in a more modern way. Yeah. And then um, we just wanted to look modern. 
and, and beautiful. And I always had this experience where when, when um, I don't know how many of the audience can relate to this, if you have bad design and then you're at a party and you talk about what you do and it's really cool, uh, and then somebody checks you out on their iPhone and you're just like, ah, oh, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, but but, but it's, it's, uh, primarily it's about you always need to, when, when, when you have a company, you need to address what's going on in the world and so you need to talk about your way yourself in a certain way, and then you need to look the part. Yeah. Do you have you seen investors look at what's being said about you in the ecosystem as part of their due diligence in investing in you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Enormously. Like, like I'd say investors for any company will do a mini due diligence. And I know. I mean, I've spoken with like every investor in London and almost every investor in. Um, in, in America, yeah, right. and uh, most of them said no, but for, but a few people said yes. Yeah. Uh, and I, I I know for a fact that the, the the thing that every investor will do in the first 20 seconds of hearing about you, they will look you up on Glassdoor, where they can see what your employees are writing about you, and then they'll look up on Trustpilot or some other review site and see what your customers are writing about you. And so I think I think investors are are, are really using that as a mini due diligence, and then. Crucially for us also, in every investment round, um, the investors will want to know what your customers think. Yeah. So for sure. In some ways, it may be that Glassdoor has, has um, led to some companies kind of pulling back and not being involved because obviously one minute you can be firing someone and the next minute you can get a bad review on Glassdoor and it kind of feels um, unjustified. and. and have you, have you engaged with companies around feeling that way? Yeah, I mean, I feel it. Yeah. Like, like in, in some sense, I, I, I run one of the world's largest reviews websites. And so we're also open to reviews about Trustpilot. We're open to those reviews on Glassdoor, and then we're open to customer reviews yeah. on Trustpilot. And so sometimes you get this review where I'm like, no, yeah. you didn't. That hurt. Uh, and, but I think as a business owner, it's less about what's fair. Like sometimes people will write things about you online that's just not fair. And, and, but you have to remember as a business owner, that is how they experienced it. Mm -hmm. Very often you have your, this, is, this was how you, what, what, what you see is true in the world. But somebody got aggravated enough to write that. Yeah. And, then, and then sometimes the business owner thinks, oh, they're having a vendetta against me. Oh, they were being unfair. They're, they're just saying that to, you know, to, 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 to get revenge or something. But most of the time, it's actually because people... That's how they like, feel. Had, ...had that feeling. Yeah. Um, and, and so there, there are two things you can do about that. So one is invite all your employees, invite all your customers to tell them what they think about you all the time so that people can see that, yes, there are a few people that are really upset, there are a few people that are really unreasonable, but most people are actually pretty happy. Yeah. And, and the second is uh, give, your, give a polite response. And, and, and in some, ex like, like never, I, so my advice is never, never go into it. I mean, you don't want to be the president of America that goes into a Twitter war with a teenager at 2 a.m. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but but uh, you, you, you certainly want to show that you care. Yeah. And, and, and I think, I think Amazon, they did a lot of uh, test about this, where they, they, they took a product and they just removed all the negative reviews. And it sells less. Interesting. Because, because everybody, like, like if, imagine you're buying a digital camera and it only costs, say, $150. You know that it probably doesn't have the battery lifetime yeah. of, 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 of the high-end cameras. You know that the lens could be better. You know all these things. But you want to know which is it. Is it the battery that's bad, or is it the picture? Is it you? What, what is it? Like it's a cheap camera. Yeah. And 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 I think the same is true when you're a customer. I think the same is true when you're a potential employee. Who are you kidding? Of course there are unhappy people. Yeah. In every business, like I'm grown up enough to know that. Of course there are unhappy customers in every company. So, my message to businesses is, every every negative feedback is an opportunity. A good response to a negative review is more powerful than 10 positive reviews. Interesting, yeah. yeah. So you guys are uh, pushing on into the US. So 
Um, what's behind that strategy and, and how's that been for you in the early yeah. stages? So the philosophy we had is that in, 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 in our world, and that's the case in, in, in most online industries, we're either in a winner-takes-all or in winner-takes-most space. Yeah. And, uh, and, and when I started the business, uh, I was already reading on TechCrunch. Yeah. And, and so the, uh, the way I thought the world worked was that uh, you get a good idea, then you go a viral marketing campaign, and then some American company will buy you. Yeah. And, and after a while, I realized, hey, actually, I don't want to be that company. Like, like I want to be the global winner. And so, and, and so, so if, if we are to be the global winner, I think it's important that we win in America. Yeah. Because if you win in America, you can unlock so much capital and you become so strong as a business that then that's very often your ticket to winning in the other uh, geographies. Yeah. So, 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 so we looked at that path and either we win in America or we wait it out until somebody won America and then they'll probably come here and beat us. Yeah. And, and how do you experience companies engaging with their customers, US versus Europe? Have you seen a marked difference? Not a big difference because I think it's very human that as a, as a, as a human being, you want to know what other people think. And, yeah. and, and, and you want to share your opinion online. If anything, you can say the Americans invented that. Yeah. Uh, and uh, the, the other aspect is as a business owner, you want to show what you stand for. Every company needs to stand for something. Yeah. What we do is we allow companies to stand for caring about your customers. And, and, and customer service in America is certainly, I, I think, like uh, better than almost anywhere in the world. Americans obsess over customer service. Yeah. So that, that doesn't, I mean, we can get into that. America, for a whole lot of reasons, is enormously difficult uh, as a market. Uh, but I think, I think uh, humans are, in that case, humans. And how, how, how successful are you being actually penetrating and getting into the market? Is that tough for you? or? Uh, yeah, I, I'd say it's a combination that we are, we're, 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 we're happy, but, but it's, America, what, what, it, this is going to sound uh, a little simplistic, America's a big place. Yeah. Like, like <laughs> America's huge, and I think as a European, you sometimes underestimate, first of all, how big America is, and also you underestimate how much is happening in America. Like, like in, 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 uh, I'm, I'm from Denmark, and in Denmark, uh, the, um, the biggest thing happening in the summer is, is, is like, newspapers would write about how long are the cucumbers this year. Right. And, 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 and then you come to America, and, and uh, CNN is on 24-7, a lot is going on. So you do a press release, and the second after, Justin Bieber gets arrested. And, yeah. and, 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 and then you close a big round of funding, and then... Trump tweet something, yeah. and and so getting over that uh, attention bar in America is is tough, and um, the the American companies are extremely good at marketing. They're extremely good at sales, and they're extremely good at execution. Yeah. And so that means that you're you're it doesn't matter what you sell, you're fighting for attention with all kinds of other companies that are just extremely good at positioning why their product deserves time. Yeah. So, 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 so I think if you want to play the big game, you, you need to go there, but, but then you're really also, America is the Champions League. Yeah. And what are the next things on the horizon for you as a company, do you think? For us, it's, it's really about not effing it up. Right. Uh, in, in, in some sense, when, when I started the business, I wasn't on Twitter, I didn't know what LinkedIn was, I didn't know what Facebook was, and then I just stumbled into this world where everybody was just sharing their opinion, and we became a part of that. We became a part of what you call the trust economy. Yep. And, 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 um, and so it's really been like I was paddling, and then suddenly there was a tsunami. Right. Uh, so for us, it's, it's very much about building a company that scales on top of that, and for me as a young entrepreneur to bring in a leadership team that is so senior that they can tell me what to do, yeah. uh, but at the same time that trusts me as a founder. And then it's about um, really, like trust is changing, and trust is under attack. Yeah. And, 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 
And I think for us as a reviews website, we feel that more and more and more that the skepticism and the audience, the skepticism amongst people using sites like ours uh, is, uh, is, is, is rightly increasing. So, so, so we need to go out there and be ever more transparent. We need to lead with transparency and we need to tell the businesses of the world that it's more important that they're transparent and that they're trying to show a beautiful picture. Well, Peter, thank you very much. And we obviously have been delighted to be supporting you along the way. And uh, let's hope it's a good year for cucumbers in Denmark. <laughs> thank, thank you, you very so much. much.